Every time you check out a ski area online, you see a set of mountain statistics like skiable acres, number of lifts, and vertical feet. But here's the truth. There are no binding standardized rules for reporting those numbers. Under such circumstances, it should be no surprise that ski areas want to put themselves in the best possible light. In most cases, the statistics provided describe attributes under the best possible scenario. It's a bit like those sales that advertise prices are up to 80% off. But if you want to ski smarter, save money, and avoid frustrating lines and closed terrain, you need to know what those numbers really mean. This is an exaggeration that most of us have probably chuckled about. When a resort claims 100 trails, they are counting every single named pathway regardless of its substance. This number includes tiny crossover paths, short runouts, and flat access roads that you might spend more time polling on than skiing. It also includes runs that are split and renamed. A single long run might be broken into upper, middle, and lower sections, padding the count by three. This means the actual number of meaningful full-length runs is often 25 to 40 percent lower than the advertised figure. When a resort reports an uphill capacity figure, say 3,600 people per hour, they are presenting the capacity under ideal conditions. This is the theoretical maximum calculated under a perfect scenario. That being, the lift is running at its fastest possible speed all the time, and every single chair is fully loaded every time. But the moment the lift starts turning for the public, that capacity shrinks. Operators slow the speed of the lift down to safely accommodate beginners or children, instantly reducing the interval between chairs. And people ski often in groups of two, three, or four, not always the six or eight required to maximize the load. A single empty chair passing the terminal drops the uphill capacity. In the end, while the sign promises 3,600 people per hour, the actual capacity during a busy day is often closer to 70 to 85% of that figure. The published number only tells you what the lift can do, not what it's actually doing. A resort advertising that 80% of its terrain is covered by snowmaking is giving you a measure of infrastructure potential, not operational reality. This number only means that 80% of their cut trails have the buried pipes and hydrants necessary to support snow guns. The real story lies in the equipment. Two mountains with 80% coverage can be worlds apart. One might have modern, high-efficiency fan guns that can make snow quickly in marginal conditions. The other might have half the number of guns and rely on older, less efficient equipment. Furthermore, their water availability and air pressure delivery systems can be very different. They might just not have the power to run all the guns simultaneously. There are three mountains I ski at frequently, and they're relatively close together. One has 98% snowmaking coverage, the other has 95, and the third has 83. The one with 83% coverage is every bit as good as the other two in getting trails open for the season, recovering from rain, and in terms of percentage of trails open on a daily basis. The terms total skiable acres or skiable terrain are very ambiguous. It likely combines defined trails and slopes along with woods and open bowls. For resorts graced with abundant snowfall, the number listed is closer to reality because their bowls and woods are likely to be open most of the season. But for areas that are highly dependent on snowmaking, the days when woods and bowls, if they have any, are skiable are very limited. 
Similar to other mountain statistics is the discrepancy between the listed ideal and the daily reality. The vertical drop is the difference in elevation between the highest lift serve point and the lowest base area. However, that measurement is not always the same as usable skiable vertical. Skiable vertical is the longest continuous run you can take without having to take multiple lifts or traversing long flat sections. At many resorts, the measured vertical drop is the same as the meaningful skiable vertical drop. However, there are also many where the difference between the two is sometimes very substantial. I'm aware of a resort that measures its vertical from the top of the mountain to the bottom of a trail that leads to a parking lot without any lift service. The takeaway here is that you need to look at a trail map to fully understand what's useful vertical drop. The total number of lifts a resort advertises suggests efficiency based purely on quantity, but the reality is that the uphill capacity and strategic placement are far more critical than the total count. Two resorts, each with 20 lifts, may have a very different uphill capacity. One might have a mix of older, lower capacity chairlifts, surface lifts, and some that they don't even operate very often, while the other has a stable made up largely of high capacity express lifts. All it takes to interpret the meaningfulness of the number of lifts is to look at the resort's total uphill capacity, and if that figure isn't available, look at the makeup of lifts that they have. The average annual snowfall is perhaps the piece of information that we most want to see, but it's often a flawed statistic. The biggest issue is the location and method of a measurement. Resorts often place their snow stake in a location specifically chosen for maximum snow collection. The reported total can be far higher than the snow that actually falls across the majority of the mountain. The meaningfulness of annual snow totals is also dependent on the local climate patterns. Imagine two resorts each advertising 200 inches of annual snowfall. If one has frequent freeze-thaw cycles or several rainy days throughout the season, the total annual snowfall is not as useful a measure as the one blessed with less variability during the season. The statistics mountains list are only the starting point. They are not the whole story. Remember, there is no industry standard when it comes to mountain statistics. To truly assess a resort, look beyond the numbers. How much of that vertical is flat? How much of the acreage are woods that are rarely skiable? How many of those trails are just catwalks? Look at the trail map. If you're fortunate enough to know someone or to meet someone familiar with the mountain, ask them for their take on things. But above all else, just get out there and have fun. Thank you so much for watching. I make these videos to share my passion of skiing and with the hopes that they will in some way make your days skiing more enjoyable. If you had fun watching the video, please like, share, and subscribe to Seniors on the Slopes.